Hello everyone. So today I'm going to present a uh, very important tutorial. It's very interesting. We're going to have a uh, simulation of a propeller, like it could be a drone propeller, and we're going to study as well the forces um, that will act on that propeller from its rotation. So we're going to probably study the uh, lift force, and we're going to see the behavior of the flow above and around the uh, rotor or the propeller itself. So I'm going to start first by showing you the geometry I've selected for this simulation. So if I go to geometry, which I've already imported, and then I edit it in the design modeler. We can see that we have uh, two parts in here. We have the medium or the enclosure and we have the disc inside. So uh, the medium will be the enclosure itself and the disc, if we hide the medium, we can have a look at the disc and inside the domain, inside the disc domain, you can see that there is a blade or a rotor um, that is, um, you know, like leaving a gap or leaving a, a groove inside the geometry. So uh, we have two, bo uh, two bodies then and uh, we also uh, have uh, a wall inside the uh, medium, oh, sorry, the disk uh, geometry. So I'm going to just now show all bodies again. And then once we have imported this geometry, we can then uh, export it to the measure or workbench measure. So to do that, uh, then you can right click and edit. So you can see in the message box in here that the mesh translation to Fluent was successful. All right, so if we go to the measure, we'll look at first the contact region. So the uh, basically the software detect the contact region between the desk between the disk uh, geometry and the enclosure geometry. We'll leave that as it is, and then we go to mesh. So in the mesh. Uh, we use the uh, curvature size function and then I've chosen a maximum face size of 1.5 10 to the power of minus 2. Obviously, um, the amount or the resolution of uh, the mesh that I've created is high. So if you're using um, uh, you know, a different computer or a different version of ANSYS with limited number of cells, then you can increase the the, uh, the the numbers in the minimum size, the maximum tetrahedral size, and the maximum face size to reach the number of cells that you want. So in this case scenario, I have 1.5 10 to the power minus 2 for maximum face size. I have uh, 9 10 to the power minus 5 for the feature size, 1 10 to the power minus 4 meter for the minimum size, and the maximum tetrahedral size is 3 10 to the power minus 2. I also created a body size. So to do that, you click on mesh, insert, and then you choose sizing. So it will create a new, uh, like a, a child under the mesh, which is called body sizing. And then you can choose which element uh, would you like to um, basically uh, allocate a specific size for it. So in here, I've allocated the disk as the body that I want to size. And I've chosen an element size of 7.5, 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Once you're done, all you need to do is just to right click and generate the mesh, which I've done already. And then uh, you can take a section plane to see the uh, mesh inside. And I'll show you how to do that. So you can see that we have a high resolution mesh for the disk itself. So to do a section plane, uh, all you have to do is just click the plane in here you want to see and then I uh, go to a new section plane and just cut through the uh, geometry or the model and then you can see inside so as you can see I've created three section planes um, and basically that's it the next step will be to uh, just give the named selections so first of all I have the blade itself so I'll, I'll show you how I created that so First of all, to create a name selection for the blade, I try to hide the face in here. Or actually, we can hide the whole uh, the, the whole body, so we suppress the body in here. And then, if we bring this to the middle, I come here and I hide this face. 
and this one as well. And then I change the selection from single select to box select. And I select the whole item and I create name selection and I'll call it blade. Here we go. And I'll press OK. So once uh, this is done, you can then um, show the other objects that we've hidden and show unsuppress all bodies. So we've created that for the blade and then we need to create the outlets as well. So outlet number one would be in this uh, side and outlet number two is in uh, this side. And the vertical axis is in the Y direction. Once everything is done, you go to Workbench and then you start processing your pro So once the mesh is updated, and then we go to Setup. Okay, so first we look at the solver. It's going to be a pressure-based solver. And we're going to have a transient simulation or an unsteady uh, state simulation. So we look at the transient. We click on the uh, gravitational acceleration as a body force and we choose the force to be in the y direction, so 9.81. 9, 9 uh, why did I choose this? Because the uh, basically propeller will be blowing air in, uh, in the same direction of uh, the gravitational acceleration. So it's going to be blowing air uh, in the y positive direction. So in order to really calculate the lift amount of lift, uh, from from that disc or from the rotor, it would be good to uh, choose the y direction as your uh, body force. So next, if you go to model, uh, we choose the viscous realizable k epsilon, and we choose the scalable wall function, and I'll press OK. The next step is to choose the material. So by default, we have air as material, and then next we go to the cell zone. We have a disc. And we have a medium. This is what we have already allocated in the meshing section. So one of these zones will have to be rotating and the other will be static. So the disk will be rotating and in order to choose or in order to um, make sure that it is and it will be rotating, we go to edit and then we, uh, we select the mesh motion. So we're trying to use the sliding mesh method in here to uh, create this rotation of the uh, blades or of the propeller itself. So for the mesh motion, if we select that, uh, we choose which axis it will be rotating around. So in this uh, case scenario, it will be around the Y axis. And we choose as well the origin of the axis. So in my case, the origin of the disk is at 0, 0, 0. And obviously, at the end, you have to choose how much it's rotating per minute. So I have a speed of 6,500 rotation per minute or RPM. So we press OK. We go to medium. There's nothing to do there. And click on operating condition and make sure to uh, tick the specified operating density and press OK. Now, if we go to the boundary condition, so you can see that the basically the software or Fluent itself has created the mesh interface automatically by doing the contact region between the target and the source. You don't need to do that uh, manually. And then you can see that we have a blade, which is a wall, and we have the two outlets, and the rest will be considered as wall. So once this is all uh, basically assigned, the next step will be to go to uh, the solution. And in solution, if you go to calculation activities, uh, we need to try and uh, automatically export the result files, which are which they should be compatible with uh, CFD post. Uh, so in order to create that, we go to calculation activities and um, we create a solution data export. And you choose which type of uh, export you want, so CFD post compatible. And then we select the quantities that we want to study. So if you want to look at all these quantities from pressure, velocities, turbulence, and uh, gradient. Um, and then you can say you can define your, the frequency or the rate of uh, saving. So basically, if you want to save 
a one result file every time step you can put one or if you want to say 100 uh, sorry one result file every 100 time step you can put 100 so this is all dependent on how much data do you want to save and how much uh, time step do you want to look at directly if your time step is uh, small uh, at the beginning you might end up with a very uh, large number of uh, files saved on your hard drive so I would recommend, for example, to have to save uh, 15 to 20, uh, sorry, to save one result file every 15 to 20 time step if my time step is very small. Okay, press. Sorry for that, because I've already defined it. So it's here. The next step then is to uh, initialize your solution. So you go to run calculation. And in here, oh, sorry, before we do that, we have to initialize. So to initialize the solution, I've chosen the hybrid initialization, and I click on initialize. Next step is to run the simulation itself. So in the run calculation section, remember, it's a transient simulation, so you will have to define your time step. So I've started with uh, 110 to the power minus 4, and then you can gradually increase that time step to suit your time and your and the accuracy so as you can see here i have 0 0.00015 second is my time step and the number of time steps i've chosen is 5000 and the maximum iteration per time step is 35 iterations once everything is ready then you are ready to click on calculate and wait until you uh, get to the time uh, that is satisfactory to your uh, case scenario. So in the next part of this video, we are uh, going to check the result and do some post-processing and CFD post.